Hey guys, welcome to my channel, or welcome back. Uh, my name is Katie, and I thought it was about high time that I did a Pan That Palette update. If you haven't seen my intro video, I chose to pan the Huda Beauty Emerald Obsessions, and I initially said in the intro that I was thinking about doing quarterly updates, and then I thought about it and realized that that's like an intro, two updates, and then a finale, which is not a whole lot. And I also realized that telling myself that I didn't have to up update until April was sort of making me not reach for this palette, which is the complete opposite of what I'm trying to achieve. So I thought that I would start doing more frequent updates and actually motivate myself to use this palette, which is the entire point. If you are curious about why I chose to pan such a non-neutral palette, I will have my intro linked up in the cards. Feel free to check that out. I explained it all there. It's a pretty short video. It's like three minutes. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'll talk a little bit about my usages and then I'll take you through how I'm looking on each shade. I'm gonna select a couple shades to focus on for the next couple months. And then I'll talk a little bit more about what I think my update schedule is going to look like for the rest of the project. So let's talk about my palette. Um, I guess to tell you about how things are going without actually telling you how things are going, Normally I film things on Friday. I'm filming this on Monday, so this can be my Tuesday video. So I needed all the extra time I could get, and it did pay off because they did hit a couple of 11th hour pans, which also was how my project pan update went for this month too, so um, apparently I'm just always doing things last minute over here. I mean, I did also have a midterm on Friday, but still, I figured I could use the extra time, and I'm glad that I took it. Now I just have to get this edited and uploaded which I can actually do because I switched my internet provider last week. So that's really exciting. And it no longer takes me like two days to upload a 10 minute video, so that's awesome. So that is going to actually allow me to do longer videos. So I have a video on greenwashing that I'm working on that should be up at some time in the next couple weeks, I'm hoping, <laughs> let's speak it into existence. So yeah, anyways, that was a little bit of a tangent. But let's talk about my palette. So I use this 14 times. I'm not tracking usage on each shade, but I, I am tracking every single time that I reach for this palette. So generally speaking, just because of what else I have in my collection, generally if I'm using this palette, it is the focus of the look and I might just reach into something else for a lighter brown for a transition shade, just because the brown in this is a little bit dark on me, so it's a little bit too dark to work as a transition. So I have used this 14 times since the intro, which was the first week of January. So three or four of those times were in were in January, and I was just really sort of slacking. I used this palette a lot over the holidays, so I kind of took a little bit of a break from it in January, and then I had a new palette to play around with, and I was really just leaning into my Pan Those Eyeshadows. Yeah, wasn't using this as much during January and then in February I realized that if I wanted to actually have progress I should really step it up so 10 or 11 of the times that I've used it have been in the last like five weeks or so. So I do have a couple of pans to show you and I will just throw a photo on the screen of what my what my palette looked like in January and this is what it looks like now. So as you can see I have two pans <laughs> Uh, I was hoping for at least three, but you know, um, what can I say? Um, so let's, I guess, go through and talk about each shade and how they are going. So I think that you can tell that there is a very slight difference on this glitter shade right here. I was kind of scared of this because I thought it might be a pressed glitter. It's not. It's mica. Um, it's just sort of like a very flaky, flaky glitter, but it is, it isn't plastic or anything like that. But I do actually like this more than I thought I would. I don't really like it over these shimmers because a lot of these already have little um, larger glitter pieces in them. So I find that this over them is just a little bit too much for my taste. But I do really like it applied with the finger all over the mattes. So there have been a couple of days where I've done an all matte look and then just put the put some of this over it and it really just adds a nice like wash of sparkle, which I really enjoy. And then... And then I have my matte mint. So as you can see, I have a tiny pan that I hit yesterday. And this one, this shade specifically has been like, defying the laws of physics because this pan looks so much deeper than this one right here. And I have been like, basically feeling like I've been sitting on the pan for two weeks now. And every time I use the shade, I was like, today's the day. And then yesterday it finally happened. Um, so I have a very, very tiny pan, but pan nonetheless. 
and then I am very very close to the shade I thought that this was going to be the first shade that I hit pan on in the palette because it is as you can probably tell my most used shade the dip has definitely increased and I think this is going to be one of those where once I hit pan I think it'll increase it'll expand fairly quickly because this sort of layer the dip is very wide so I find when that happens and you hit pan they do tend to go pretty quickly I think the reason that I haven't hit pan on this shade is just because the shimmers in this palette are a very they're not quite cream shadows but they are very creamy um, and they have a very like kind of emollient feel to them so this one kind of moves around in the pan a little bit so now that I'm like directly on the pan but every time I apply this because I use my finger with these it kind of moves around the product <laughs> so I haven't exactly gone directly down to the pan the same way you would with a dryer shimmer formula but I'm very very close so I expect that this will take like two or three more uses and I should be there and then this I wasn't initially looking to hit pan on but it does work really nicely as an eyeliner like I said these are very creamy so with a little bit of setting spray on a brush these do apply quite nicely as eyeliner and this one is a more subtle shimmer formula it's kind of like a black black and base with a little bit of a green shift to it so it's very pretty and it also works well on the lower lash line or for deepening up the outer V and then there's this one I think you can see a little bit more of a dip in but I'm probably like halfway to pan this is not this is probably the this is the dud shade of the palette it's not super pigmented it swatches pretty well but it doesn't apply on the eyes like that so um, I know that a couple of people have suggested a glitter glue. I looked, um, I had to go to the drugstore <laughs> to go pick up a package because that's where, well, to go pick up my new, <laughs> my new modem last week. And so I did look for a glitter glue, but um, they don't carry it. So I picked up setting spray instead and we'll see how that works. But yeah, and I also picked up, <laughs> I also picked up a darker concealer because if you are not new here, you might recall that I purchased the Rare Beauty concealer, but I like, completely failed at shade matching so it's way too light and I realized that things are still looking a little bit light on camera. My under eyes look normal in person but I think that I just need to play around with the ratio of the two concealers that I use to figure out like what actually looks normal on camera because like I said my under eyes look normal in person but on camera they're still looking a little light so that'll be some trial and error so just bear with me. <laughs> um, yeah so this I think I'm going to definitely try to use more because it is really pretty and I think it works well with the St. Patrick's Day season that we are going into. And then there's this matte emerald. I really like this. This definitely doesn't pay off the same way it in the pan as it does on the on the eyes. So it definitely comes off a little lighter later on the eyes. It does take a little bit of building, but I do think it's a really pretty shade. It makes a really nice pop of color on the lower lash line. And I think you can see that there is a little bit more of a dip. Um, haven't used this one a whole lot. Like I said, this one is a little bit too dark to act as, as a transition on me and I find that there's something about the undertones that just kind of looks dirty on me when applied with a fluffy brush. So, but it, I find that it works, it works okay layered over a lighter shade. So I'm wearing it today layered over, um, Luna from my Pan This Eyeshadows Quint for the month. So, yeah, I do definitely want to use this more and I think with spring, I think with spring and during the fall I will probably use this bottom row a lot more than I have been this far. Same with the emerald shimmer. I'm wearing this today but I haven't used it a whole lot so I don't think you can really see much difference. And then this gold I was hoping to have pan on and I am close-ish but there definitely is more of a dip but no pan yet. I've mainly been using this as with a pencil brush as like an inner corner highlight. I'm doing that a little bit today, but then also on the center of, of the lid as a halo. There's something about this, this green, this gold shade that just kind of does not look right on my skin tone, and I don't know what it is, um, but I think it's just, it might just be an olive, <laughs> an olive skin tone thing where a lot of lighter shades that aren't um, sort of champagne-y can look a little bit weird, so I've noticed that I have a pale gold in another palette too and it just doesn't quite look right on my skin tone so I think most of the use that I'm going to get out of this is going to be as an inner corner or as a halo and I do, they don't talk about this being a duochrome but I swear it is. Um, it definitely has a little bit of a shift. I hope you guys can see. It kind of goes from this sort of lime color to gold in the light and yeah it just doesn't, on its own, it just doesn't look 
quite right on me, but like I said, I think that there are some ways that I can use it to definitely get a little bit more use out of it. So hopefully um, I will have some pain on that in the next update. So having gone through this palette, I'm just gonna pick out some focus shades for this next for the next two months. So from so for the first update, I think you can definitely tell that I focused on these two right here and then this dark one here. So I think that for the next update, I think I'm going to focus on these these two right here and then also this gold. And then I just want to hip pan here, which like I said, I'm really, really close, I can tell. Um, I can kind of tell that there's just like a very thin film of product over the over the pan so I think a few more uses and I should be there like I said these are very creamy so they do kind of move around or this one specific um, in particular is quite a creamy formula so it does kind of move around a little bit and then I would like to expand the pan on these guys right here so that's sort of what I'm looking to do for the next update that is pretty much going to wrap it up I'm going to I've done a pretty terrible job of taking photos like I said I didn't really wear this a whole lot during January and then during February, I don't even know what happened to February, but um, so I just did a really questionable job of taking photos of looks during February because it just went by so fast, but I do have a few to put on the screen. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is kind of like my default <laughs> look with this palette. So it basically features the, the matte emerald, the matte sort of mint color as a crease shade, a little bit of that matte emerald. Um, a little bit further on in the crease just for a little bit of depth and then this guy right here all over the lid and usually this guy on the outer corner with a little bit of this in between that's sort of like my go-to um, with this palette so what I have going on today is I just used this layered on this dark brown layered over Luna from the Gemini palette as a crease color and then these two to make a halo eye a little bit of this on the inner corner and then I also used the green sapphire from the uh, KVD Alchemist palette. So I have that on my cheeks too. It's it's a little alien looking, but I'm not mad at it. So that's what I have going on today. And then I think my last look that I remember to photograph was probably my favorite. I forgot how much I like doing this because I was just focusing so hard on trying to pan this guy, but it basically just packed this matte mint all over the crease, or sorry, all over the lid, used this as a crease shade, and then Put this glitter all over the lid and I was a really big fan of that so I think I'm gonna be doing that more I feel like once it starts to warm up a little bit more that'll be a really nice like fresh spring look and I feel like it's something that I would feel comfortable wearing to class I think one of the reasons that I haven't used this palette as much is just because I expected to have a more similar class schedule to last semester and it hasn't quite worked out that way. Um, I've had a lot more, I have a lot more interactive classes and a lot more discussion based classes this year that are sort of like camera on sort of thing and I do try to tone it down a little bit more for those whereas last year a lot of my, most of my classes were asynchronous, hands off, or just lectures so there definitely is I think a little bit of a jump in the expectations between third and fourth year classes. Yeah so I've definitely been sort of reaching for my more neutral palettes for for those just so that I'm not distracting and I think that the vibe for Zoom University is definitely a lot more chilled out even though I would definitely wear some more colorful looks to in-person classes I feel like yeah the vibe's just a little bit different for online school so um, yeah that definitely contributed to not wearing this as much but I'm going to try to incorporate it more over the next couple months and then I have my shades to focus on and hopefully um, I will have some more progress for you guys on the next update. So speaking of, I think that for right now, I think I'm going to do stick with the bi-monthly, um, but then once I hit more pans and things start expanding, I might switch to monthly updates. So we'll see how that's going. I think I'll reassess at the next update or maybe the one after that, and we will see how things are going. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I know there were some tangents, but um, I'm like that sometimes. <laughs> so. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed watching. I would love to know how your project is going, if you're doing this, what palette you chose. Um, feel free to like and comment and possibly consider subscribing if you enjoy my content, and hopefully I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.